Okay, so let's take a look at selecting a clock source. We first need to go to the, the APB peripheral clock enable register number two, which is this one we're gonna call in our code. And in that register, we have a bit that is ADCEN or analog to digital converter enable. And it's bit number nine, and it shows in the description that this is the ADC interface clock enable. So we need to first enable the clock for the analog to digital converter. So let's do that first. It was in the AB, APB2 ENR. And we want to write a one in that bit. What am I doing here? RCC. We have the ADCEN and AD1EN, ADC1EN. And I'm going to use the ADC1EN since we're using the ADC1 control register here. So we want to make sure we're consistent with the ADC1 with our enable bit for the clock register. The next thing we need to do is to start the HSI14 RC oscillator within the chip. We have to select an actual clock source for the ADC, and the control register here has clock sources and has a clock source called the HSI14. And this is where you're controlling that particular clock source. The one clock source that the ADC uses specifically is the HSI14. And this is the bit we need to use to, to turn it on. We're going to enable the HSI 14 clock. Once we enable it, the clock source will become live for our ADC to be able to use. So let's go ahead and do that. What, what register was that in? Let's see. RCC CR2. So let's go ahead and type that in. Oops. And we'll need to write a one in that register as well. And if you notice that there was a few other parts of that register that has a ready, and we can use this HSI 14 ready to test to see if the, if the clock has been enabled and is ready to function. So let's go ahead and write a while loop to make sure that there is a one written automatically into this bit by the microcontroller, because the microcontroller, when the clock source has been invoked or started, the ready bit will be written to one automatically by the microcontroller. So let's go ahead and create a while loop for that. It was under CR2. Yeah. And we're going to use the AND. We're going to use the RCC, the same CR2, and then the HSI. Oops. Got the and sign there. HSI. Let's see if we can find the ready. Here we go. The ready bit. And we're going to make sure that we can we keep the while loop going while it's equal to zero. And when it becomes a one, it'll escape out of this while loop. This is kind of the opposite of what happened in the calibration, because we wanted to make sure that the calibration, when we wrote a one to it, the microcontroller automatically wrote a zero to it when it's been calibrated. But when we're turning something on, we want to make sure that we determine when it's ready and when the microcontroller puts a one in a bit, we want to test, we want to keep a, we want to make sure that we keep this while loop going. We want to make sure we keep this while loop going until there is a one in this bit. So let's use our LCD. I think it looks better with the without the spaces here. Okay, so we're gonna start clock. And over here we're gonna say clock started. We haven't actually finished with the clock yet because we still have to connect the ADC 
to that clock, to the HSI 14 clock. And to do this, we need to use the another um, register, control register for configuration for the ADC, which is called the configuration number two register. And let's take a look at what is inside of this register. You'll see that there is a CK mode under the configuration number two for the ADC. And you have three choices. When we get further into timings and clock, I'm not gonna really go into this at this time, but we'll, we're gonna be using the synchronous clock selection. Let's take a look at what selections we get when we type that in. So we're gonna set it to one for the CK mode. So let's see what we get. So we get the CK mode, CK mode zero and CK mode one. Let's see what CK mode gives us. And that is C, let's see what that is. Control C. So we have this number and it looks like it's both ones. So just by putting CK mode, we would actually invoke this selection, which is actually, actually what I had in my test code and it worked. So maybe I can try different ones and see what happens. I'm going to keep it at the reserved for some reason why. I don't know why, but I'm going to keep it at the reserved. So, so now we're finished with starting the clock. Now let's go on to enabling the ADC. Enabling the ADC is very similar to actually the starting up the clock. We have a, an enable and we have an enable ready. So we can test for a ready bit. So let's go ahead and go to the control register for the ADC. That's where the enable is located. And we know this because we used it up here, but now we're going to do the reverse of this. We're going to actually turn it on. So we're going to put a one in that bit. And to test to make sure that the ADEN is in fact ready and ready to do a conversion or start doing conversion, we can go ahead and test that to make sure the ready bit has been set. So we're looking for the ready bit. So let's see if we can find it. ADC1, or it's ADC actually. CR and ADC. CR. Actually, I don't think it's in the CR. I don't see it here. ADC, CR, AD. No, I don't see it. So let's take a look and find out where the for, where the ready is for the ADC. It should probably be called RDY, ADRDY, and that is in the ISR register. So let's go ahead and use that instead. I S R A D R D Y. And that needs to be equal to one. So this is going to have a while loop while it is zero. And when it is one, it'll get out of that while loop. So now we're turning it on and we're waiting for it to get ready. So let's go ahead and put our LCD in there as well to inform us if it is ready or not. So enable ADC and then we'll call it ADC enabled. So, so far in this video, we've set up the, the circuit. So we are providing power to the the analog side of the microcontroller. And we're starting with the configuration of the microcontroller, making sure that we calibrate the ADC. We select the, the clock source for the ADC and we enable the ADC. In the next video, we'll start looking at the actual conversion, how to start a conversion. 
but there are still some configuration we still need to do, and that is specifying what channels we would like to listen to. So until then, thank you for watching.